What's good, everyone? It's your boy, Sifu G, the esoteric warrior, and we're back with another The Tao, Tao of Kung Fu podcast with Sifu John Lee. This is part three, and everyone is enjoying our chats. So thank you, everyone. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and also comment because the comments interact with us, and we give and any questions you want to give uh, Sifu John or myself for a podcast, just put them in the comments below. Josan Sibyl. Josan, 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 thank you for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one's on com or oh, oh, fighting in Chinese Kung Fu, the old versus the new. We've all seen the the footage of Tai Chi versus the white crane master in black and white. We've heard yeah. about this. Every Kung Fu style has their own story about our grandmaster challenged a, a, a Western boxer or a Western wrestler. That was the epitome for, I think, Chinese uh, Kung Fu people trying to outdo a Western fighter. What do you think, Sifu John? Uh, as the fighting changed, obviously, in my eyes, it has. Oh, it has changed dramatically. Um, but before you even go into that, I just want to tell you, my dad was actually, when he, uh, when he went to Hong Kong in the 50s and he joined the police force, the local police force. There. And in, in the academy, there was uh, a lot of chic Indian, tall one, uh, and also a lot of the Westerners, like the English. And uh, I think there was a few Dutch people there as well. And there was Korean as well, believe it or not. Um, but like I said, they used to have an academy there and they had a boxing ring in there and um, they used to go there and to spar and fight, you know, in the ring. And that was, that's, that was the thing they told me. But it also told me it's not always Kung Fu win, winning these fights, you know. There's, there's wrestlers there that can submit, you know, the Kung Fu people and there's boxers that punch a crab out of Kung Fu people, you know, and vice versa. So it's not just one way that people think, oh, Chinese Kung Fu is going to beat everything. It's not like that. Um, you know, it's not entirely true, you know, they told me. Um, but when I was young, they talked about that fight. <laughs> when they're talking about the, the uh, Bak Hong and the uh, Tai Chi, right? Um, and so when I was a kid, we used to listen to my uncles and, you know, and, you know Kung Fu uncles and all telling us how great this fight is. You know, it was like a charity fight in Macau. So, you know, we, we had this image. Wow, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a real good fight. In, you know, but we haven't seen it because it's on this real, real 40 mil built, uh, in our film and we don't get the chance to see that when we a kid, you know. But it, it tells me all of this, my uncle, my father. So anyway, so in our mind that, we think, oh, this is great. So, as, as 70, as 1976, 77, um, so I was watching a lot of these, um, uh, you know, uh, TV shows, and they were showing about these uh, in Malaysia, the Hong Kong team go to Malaysia and have this Kung Fu fight in Taiwan and all that. So, they were pretty good, you know, kicks and punches, and they, they weren't wearing gloves. They were just some of with bare knuckles, you know, and they were wearing head gear either. So, it was really good. So, we had a, a taste when we, I was probably about 15, 16, so wow, this is great, you know? Um, so so in my mind, imagining in a decade before these two masters, they were so good in their, in their art, they must be really good fighting, you know? So we're sitting down there, oh, wow, well, you know, and we're just streaming away, oh, this is really good. Until the 80s came, right? It was 80, 81. And I think, I don't know, the, I'm a bit old now. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like an old fart now because I'm talking about Betamax, Betacord, right? These are the video format that was before VHS. They were a lot smaller. They were much better system. So everyone would, would buy this uh, VCR <laughs> video game recorder and put this thing in there. And I went to a restaurant. Uh, my dad, you know, Banks had a restaurant, but he also had a friend at a restaurant, Banks, called Bay Bu Yin. And there was a whole bunch of people there. So tonight we're going to play this fight, you know? In Macau, we got this thing on a, a beta cord, you know, beta max. So I went there, it's a, you know, as like, a 15, 16 year old, <laughs> just go in there with my dad. And there's a big screen there, and I put a big screen there. And I, I said, no, well, this is going to be playing on a beta cord. So what's the big screen for? So they put on a big TV and we're watching it. I said, watching it, I was shocked. See, Gary, I was absolutely shocked. It was, it was just terrible. 
you know, yeah. it's all over the place. You think with uh, big names like they supposed to be and masters of an art to fight worse than a schoolyard fight to me. That was it, yeah, was, it was it was so embarrassing. And you know, we love Kung Fu, we always say that, but when you see such rubbish and bad, just everything was bad, bad footwork, hands were low, one's running around trying to kick him up the ass. They're sw <laughs> swinging and falling over. One gets punched in the face and he's, oh, I'm got all blood on me. Oh. Yeah, and then they're trying to stop the fight and then this and then trying to make the thing I mean, it, 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 in those days the the the, the not too harsh is to criticize his two masters just to rewrite everything you know on, 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 so they can send to the, the editor in the newspaper and um so that was my experience looking at this and i thought i was shocked my brother was absolutely shocked too because he was in the boxing Muhammad ali and joe fraser and all of that yeah, so he yeah. saw this is a terrible fight like a school kid and that reminded me in my school day in Cleveland Street Boys High School right we came to Sydney and <laughs> went to the roughest high school I went to the I same mean, high school as you <laughs> yeah so I was probably about six, five six years before you right so I went in there and uh, we had a bunch of guys from Hong Kong we just uh, you know they were arriving from Hong Kong and then so in high school so I was from the Gold Coast, so I came down and, uh, you know, and we made friends and all that. And some of them was from, you know, the New Territory and uh, they were doing Kung Fu as well. But we also had a lot of Korean. The Koreans were, you know, from uh, a student that came and joined in, in this school. But they were very, um, well, the Korean was a lot taller than the Cantonese, I can assure you that. And they were very strong guys too. And... 16, 17, they were really strong. They had they all, they all, they all black belt. I just found out they were all black belt when I was in there and I couldn't believe it. They were doing Taekwondo. And um, they would finish school and they would go into a gym and, you know, school gym or, or, or final room and they would practice their uh, the, the, the Taekwondo. And of course, you know, like uh, in those days, they were trying to pick on the nation because they know they, you know, they know martial arts. So everyone's supposed to pick on them. And the Koreans come out and just knock them with, with the kicks and all that. And uh, we got into like a lot of school school fights and they were just like like that, the one we're talking about, right? The, the fight. Um, it was it was pretty horrendous when you think about it. And then you go to school every day, every day after school, we would go to Prince Apple Park behind the pool there and we punch each other to crap, you know, like and the doc and, and the and the, and you know the teacher can't do anything because it's after school, right? You know. And it's like always half an hour, you know, after school time, we go there and, and you know. Uh, I got to see a lot of fights, definitely. And I was, I've been in a few of them too. And, uh, but the Korean definitely was much, much better because they had training. And, and then they told me that it was like they had to go to military school for two years or something like that. So most of the stuff, most of the guys come out, they actually can hit something, kick something, break something. So, but, uh, yeah, that, that was my experience with all that. Well, the, and, the, uh, the, uh, Taekwondo, Hapkido, all the Japanese arts are a military-type training, all in lines, yeah. and it's nonstop. Uh, when I did Hapkido, every lesson, my whole gi, lit pants and top, you could ring it out. And I've never seen one overweight uh, Korean stylist because of the high kicks it actually strips the weight off you, right? And, <laughs> and and to me, training like that and and being pushed military style will always bring results. Where kung fu, if you've got a four hour class, you, you'll do some forms. You sit down, have some tea, talk some rubbish, talk about ging, and then old stories pop up. And <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You can get but, you know, like, I like I like to give um uh, the latest civil Randy Bannon a plug. Um when I went to civil uh, uh Randy, he he actually trained us very, very hard. He pushed us to live. There was a lot of cardio, but there was a lot of um kicking, punching, um put up uh, so, uh, press up, sit up, all this other thing. And I can tell you. Uh, 
I was around uh, 19 or 20. That was the fittest time of my life because I kept six pack, everything like that, right? And um, there was no big tummy or anything like that, you know? All the students were very fit. Even now, Silver Silver Randy was phenomenal. He can fly up and do a, a, a spinning kick and things like that. When I go to the Chinese school, I don't see the same physics. A lot of the, a lot of the guys are teaching us. It, it seems that we know the way. Um, they're not as active as them, but they always say that, you know, we do D-Mac, we do this, we do that, you know? So, so it kind of, kind of made me think about it, you know? But I just want to tell you that uh, Super Randy really trained me and really, like even my dad said to me, when I went there for you know, like two years, I think with him, you know, I was the fittest I could be, you know? Um, and then, of course, came Mantis training. There was a different type of training. Um, yes, getting back to all these fights, you know, and you would think that I, you would think that, you know, um, the story you hear is, you know, you, you, you sometimes you, you question it, you know, <laughs> is, is it like that? Like I heard about <clears throat> Peter used to come and tell me about this story. He said it was a, a karate guy. I don't know, how many Dan, he's very famous, right? He went to Malcolm Sue. Uh, Gun and he challenged Malcolm Sue. And um, the story is that uh, I think Malcolm Sue drew a circle or something in, on the room, in the room. I think Peter was there and a few other guys actually saw it, right? And this karate guy, karate guy came from Japan and he wrote a few books already. I forgot his name. It's got a long name. Anyway, um, they, they square off and spout a fight and the guy kicked him and Malcolm moved aside and he used to box out and broke his ribs, right? And that was it. And um, so they, they had to call the ambulance and talk in the hospital. And when he recovered, I think a few months later, he came back with two tubs of ice cream. He said, Malcolm still love ice cream. So he went there and paid his respect. Like, you broke my ribs, you're good, that's your ice cream, you know? Oh. You know? And that's the, one of, that's the one of the story I heard from, from the old days from Peter when he told me. I heard, um, uh, I, I think you probably have heard this, but uh, I heard Lamia Gray versus Ipsui was a, a fight back in the day. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, that story got the few version I heard look, look, from different sources. I heard um, you you hear from the daughter of Ipsui telling that you know his father won, and because some of you so well. Then you heard from the, the dragon people say like Mugai actually didn't lose at all. You know, he actually, um, you know, it was like a jaw of her thing. Uh, then you hear story that like Mugai actually won the fight, you know. But um, I heard very reliable sources that both hurt themselves uh, really badly and they had to call the ambulance, okay. But, uh, but which story do you believe, <laughs> you know? I mean, if you say the dragon master uh, lost, then the dragon side gets very upset. If you say you've sure lost, then the Joe Garth will get very upset, you know? Well, let, let's but, hope it's nothing like the friggin' White Crane versus uh, Tai Chi because yeah. uh, that'd be very disappointing to, if it was something like that, that's for sure, <laughs> you know? Well, you know, like, again, you know, I've got a name who's told me all this story, inside story, told me that it went around the fifth, the five to 10 minutes around. And, 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 you know, and you think about this, right? So we got sold on this Chinese martial arts. We shut them down in three or four seconds, and we demarked them, and, you know, our tents are deadly, okay? So if two grand masters or two masters fighting, you would think they'll end up in 10 seconds, within 10 seconds or four seconds. As soon as the hand contact, you know, sort of a bang, 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 you know, you hit the guy, and the guy's down, right? And they're so refined and they dim map and all that. They would hit each other on dim map on the Kukchi or, you know, on the temple. But, yeah. You know, they would just shut them down. But it went on five or ten minutes. Mm. Around that so seven, eight minutes or something like that. That's what How, I heard from a few people. Because Lam Yigui would have been a little bit older than Ipsoi. Oh, much older. Much older. Ipsoi was, you know, his peak. So you would have think that, you know, when you watch, you know, you watch uh, the Wong Fei Hong movie and Sekin and Fan Da Hing, you know, they, they circle around like a few minutes before they get into it and they hit the feet at the same time. They, they, they bounce off and they go circle again. Now, uh, that, you know, kind of, like, that kind of reminds me of the rooftop fights you see in, <laughs> in Hong Kong. You know, they, they walk around and they're all strategy, but uh, 
Yeah, it, it's it's weird. Kung Fu people are weird. <laughs> well, you know, on the, on the rooftop, I mean, it, uh, there's some months, there's some um, that uh, publish showing, you know, on, on YouTube, right? Which uh, William Chong and a few other guys who, you know, on the rooftop and fighting. And there's some private monthly that I saw, right? And they were just pretty simple fight, you know, there was not much technique. You don't see my teeth out, they were just whacking each other. And then um, someone you know, got tricked, you know, in the, in the Hong Kong, in the rooftop there, it's not flat level, you know, they got, they got things sticking out, you know, like, the, uh, like a beam or that. Like you walk down to, uh, like in Singapore, in Balester Road, you see the, 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 the roads high and low, high and low, and then you go to Guangzhou, you see that all of a sudden it's a, it's a big drop and a big step, you know? And you think, shit, you know, you don't want to get drunk in those places, you know, you, you roll over and you kill yourself. But in, a, in, in Western country, I don't know about America, but I think some America's places like Australia are very level. You've got ramps, you know, so you don't get to trip over. But in the rooftop there, there's a lot of this cross beam, you know, and then it's very badly finished. The work and, and, and they, they okay. fit, saw them fall over. Fit, someone fall over, right? Bang, and they fall over. And he said, mate, I punched this guy. And this guy's so good that, you know, my, my seeing he punched this guy. And he, he fall two meters down that way. But the guy's tripped. You know, it's not in your head and he fall down. He just went back and he tripped himself. You know, like I saw a few of this and I'm thinking, I'm thinking bloody exaggerating this stuff, you know, like, you know. Um, but for, for people that have been doing Kung Fu for a long time, it is disappointing when you see, see those fights, especially we're in a different era, of course, and I think... Yeah. I think it's changed so much. Well, Western boxing's always been strong since the uh, the start of boxing, you know. Um, but the training has developed to much a higher degree that these are professional athletes, super strong, super powerful, knock you out with one punch with gloves on. Yeah. Break well, your ribs with gloves on. Well, the, the thing is that it's, it's evolved. I mean, it's boxing in the in the very early days it used to go like that, and then and, and now to like short power, um, and of course they got tears out. What do you mean they don't have tears out? They get too close in the clinch and push it, push your head, push your head, uh, arm down, bang, punch it. Of yeah, course they, 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 they got know, parries and everything. They got pair, yeah, they got things like they go overhead like that, and you're trying to stop that those sort of overhead hit, and they slowly goes different angles that they practice, but they also got, they develop, they must watch us a lot of time doing short power punches, right? They must develop that. Um, so it's not as telegraphic as before that you can stop like that. I remember um, uh, a boxer came to my place and I, I got to admit that I got knocked in the eye <laughs> and they gave me a rectal detachment. I went to the hospital and they lost my eye. And, the thing is that um, he was so fast with his punches, and I had an odd day. It's simple. It doesn't matter your seafood, you know, your <laughs> direct line, you're the uh, in the oh, shoulder. Well, that... Fighting, when you, when you fight, no matter what level you're at, sparring yes. or in a competition, you're going to yes. get hit. There's no way around it, right? To think that you're going to be able to block everything and no one, you're no. never going to get hit. It's that's a myth, right? And this is and yeah. awesome. <laughs> you're right. You have a long day, and you know, you'd be slow, and it got through, right? Bang, you know, and you know, there's it because it happens so fast, you know, like with any demo compliances, you can you, you know what to do. Like, my students said, You throw a right, and I'll go like this, you throw a left, I'll go like that. Of course, it's gonna work because you already know what's gonna happen, right? So you can execute those techniques and they're always perfect because they gave you a, a perfect angle to, to work from, right? But, you know, as you move around for a real spa and a real fight, and this guy was coming to get me. Like, he had intention to hurt me, but I had no intention to hurt him. But I know that he told me when we, our hand contacted me, when as soon as he hit me, my hand slipped through and my, my, my beauty was at his eye, but it didn't reach his eye. It was like a, a few millimeter, just brushed his eye, right? 
and I feel that heat and I thought, shit, I think I need to go to hospital. I know my eye, you know, I had weak eyes. And if you get a hip cobble hit like that, I had problems. And it's sure enough, I had a retinal detachment and had to go to surgery, we lost my eye. So I know that it's not a, it's not a game, you know, when you go out there, you, you really got to train, you know, it's not a thing that you go there and it's like a demo, it's not, you know, it's ugly. And I got to tell people that um, you, you and I want our stream to be safe in the, on the street. We, we have because you have a, we have a responsibility. You know, I, I, you know, and we can't teach things that it's not realistic. I mean, if you want to learn the form, I'll teach you the form, no problem. You can teach the form. Um, and there's variation on different form too, different people teach us differently, but that's just the form. But when you when you want to do sun cell training, you bring it to the next level, then you've got pad, then you've got sparring, you know? You got, you're trying to get, us, get the student as close as possible to the real thing, you know? Of course, you know, like the real, real thing, well, that was back in the days in the Lupita, right? You know, it used to take us to <laughs> across to uh, the milk bar there and it's a lot, just to go out there and have a fight. And, you know, rest day and we're just notorious, you know, look, guys, bikies there, everyone's there. And they're looking for a fight on a Saturday night. You know, that's their fun, you know? So it's the same guys out there, might you want to have your first fight, go over there and fight them, you know, and see how good your tongue on is. And I remember one of the guys, I don't know, his name is Magic or something like that, the Polish guy, he went there and had, had a fight with the guy. And he came back to Saul Peter. He said, Sifu, he said, I can't believe it. Two hands are knocked the guy down. And then and Peter said to him, what do you expect? Like going on a, like a half an hour Jackie Chan movie or something like that? <laughs> and so then you get you get realistic fighting, you know? Um, and everyone's kind of in those days, right? Because of the culture. You get pushed to do that. Even if you don't want to be a fighter, you just want to learn the art, you get pushed to do that. I didn't agree with a lot of stuff that went on to school, but it was the thing. And whoever passed those tests had a lot of fighting skill. And there's a lot of things I can tell you about some of my seeings that I that, that, that up to the mischief, you know, in the city. But uh, I'll leave it another time. But yeah, definitely, definitely. Even my own student had fights as well. Um, and I'm not very proud of it. Uh, but they were picked on, you know, they were down Cronulla, early hours in the morning. And really funny too, because I'm very tall as six foot as, as, a, as a Chinese person, or <laughs> oriental person. My students, most of them are very, they're not that tall. It's, that's the reason why they come to learn Kung Fu, because they maybe get picked on, you know. They went around the disco um, down Cronulla. Uh, this, this is about 2000 something, or 2001 or two. And uh, I didn't know about all of this until a week later. They told me about it. Um, they, they were down there with a girlfriend, and then all of a sudden, a free Tongan guy came in and roughed them up a little bit, you know? And so, so I said, and then obviously, they told me the story after that, you know? Um, they were in the fight, you know, bare fist, anything like that. And next thing you know, the free Tong was running down the, the mall and then got round up by the police, everyone, right? And the police asked the Tongans, why you look so scared, you know? You just started to fight with this guy, you know? And the Tongans said, they were bashing us. Mm. And, the, and the police said, what are you talking about? You guys are sick with something tall and, and so big. And those guys, those three white guys are just so small. How could they bash you up? So the police didn't believe their stories. So around there, we went up and put them in the cop shop there and questioned everyone. And then they let my student go. Obviously, the people saw that, you know, they didn't start to fight. But... They came back to me and, and they said, uh, 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 so please don't mention my name. <laughs> I didn't teach you that. I didn't want the cops to come in that start so questioning me, you know? He said, oh, we didn't win the see we, we just uh, we learned it from the Jackie Chan movie or something like that. You know, it's <laughs> ridiculous. Just to you know, harm them off. <laughs> and then, then they um then I think my student came up to me one day, he goes to me, uh see with John, I want to ask you one question. You actually work when you teach me, you know, when you taught me. And I said, What, do you have doubt about it? I said, I said, well, yeah, first, we, you know, like, because you, you made us do so much pad work, so much interaction stuff and not forms. We just think that you didn't know how to teach us any more stuff. But maybe that's, what you, that's what you know. We don't think you know any more, you know? I said, no, I know a lot of stuff. I just didn't want to teach you because I just want to teach you something that you can defend yourself.
isn't that what you come to see me about? And um, you know, in the eighties, really funny too, because in the I'm uh, sorry, in eighties and nineties, and even two thousand. Um, uh, well, when I was in the eighties, right? You know, I, you know, I'm a decision as well. I used to dye my hair blonde, <laughs> ah. right? Blonde and streaks and all that. In the eighties, I was was really fashionable, right? Had longer <laughs> hair then, you know. And uh, anyway, my student came around two thousand. I seen one by one, they dyed their hair, hair black. I dyed, I, hair, I dyed my hair black. And I said, all of a sudden I looked around, uh, I had around, one time I had about 45, 48 students, and most of them had dyed, dyed hair black, and I couldn't work there, why? And then I thought, oh, they all wanted to be like Bruce Lee. <laughs> you know, so I, I kind of worked it out. Oh, okay. So all the Asian now is having blonde hair and you know, and, and brunette, and then all the all the white guys having black hair. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just funny to me the, how how the world's you know change. And now, uh, yeah. So that that was that was the story of my uh, of my uh, of my school. And um, they were good kids. You know, there was one kid came in, um, uh, and and I don't even really want to um, teach anymore this sort of technique until they they really um really disciplined about it he broke someone's arm <laughs> okay so um what what i was showing i was showing some other student one night and about the breaking head you know you grab the hand yeah. with the elbow you break okay you come down chalk you, you break okay so i was showing that some senior student that you know trained with me for a few years and this 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 kid called jared he was an apprentice um a carpenter, it's only 17 or 18 or something like that came in. But you know, some people, they can just watch a technique, practice a few times, they can actually pull it off. You know, I didn't think he can pull it off, but you know, like, things like that, he pulled off. And he actually broke someone's arm in a disco. They picked on him or something like that, because he talked to one girl and three guys was, you know, got on the dance floor, started punching him. He grabbed one of the guys and broke his hand, broke his arm, was dangling down. They had to switch on the, all the lights, stop the disco, you know, call the security, call the ambulance, you know. And then um, and then I didn't know about this. And then I didn't see this kid for a week. And then he came in one day. He came in and gave me my T-shirt back, the sash. He said, see, I'm not learning this. Mm. I said, why? He said, too dangerous. He said, I came in here to learn Kung Fu to get healthy and, you know, have some self defense capacity, but you taught me something that could break someone's arm. Well, I didn't teach you that directly. You were just in the class, you know. I think it was self-defense, you know. That self -defense. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's weird. But I think the, remember in the 70s in Hong Kong, there was a lot of uh, Kung Fu matches versus Thai boxing and uh, <laughs> other, other yeah. styles. And even... Master Learn Chung said at that time everyone wanted to if you could beat Thai boxers, then you'll yeah. get a good name. And I think now the different Chinese fighters are starting to dominate MMA as world champions. So and, yeah. and yeah. also the Sanda our uh, fighters they, they, now of China are very, yeah. very strong compared to very good. two years ago, right? So they've yeah. upped their game, their training methods, and it's fighting is a constant development. Yeah, because because when you try something in the ring it didn't work, you're gonna have to you adjust the angle, adjust the way you train, and adjust the way you hit. Just well, you, got, you, got rule, you got rules too, right? So you can't be stomping on necks and heads on the ground. Yeah. So, but you you do you do you 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 you, you, you train within that 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 um that, that that the framework okay so then you're not going to go uh i'll go yeah hit the back of the neck but if you're a real good fighter you can play it you can you can fight in any rules you know that's what i'm trying to say because you, you're skillful enough to do things you know um it's not because oh i wear gloves and i can't penetrate or i can't hit the back of the neck but you can hit other places to still knock the guy down so was you know I mean he's he's not getting extra bloody uh, advantage over you. you you completely even on the same rule you just have to do your stuff and he does his stuff simple right I don't know why people you know, so hung up about it you know 
you know, you know, if you're a good fighter in the ring, you're gonna be a good fighter in the street. If you, if you're a good fighter, you're gonna learn a lot of stuff. You're gonna learn you, things a lot faster than other people. And if you can adapt to rules, you can also adapt to no rules on the street. You know, exactly, exactly. You know, like uh, you know, human beings very smart. You know, they can adapt. You know, um, I think so, it's a cop, uh, I think it's a cop out for a lot of kung fu people. You know, to be honest, when they say, oh, I can't use my special techniques because i got gloves on, well, then punch normal, like normal people and see if you can knock them out. Like, most of them haven't got that uh, knockout power in Kung Fu. No. I, I, I saw, I, I, even connecting, they have a problem with it. They can do it statically. When they start moving and, you know, the guy wanted to move around, Move around, he won't give him the angles and he can't get connection. And, 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 and that's not putting down uh, the Kung Fu styles that also do smarring yeah. and sandar yeah. and class. This, like, it's not, this is traditional, it's just, the traditional it, it, arts that don't fucking spar at all. Yeah, so they're missing that part of it. So, 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 so you, you go to the class, you got salt. This is the genuine stuff. It hasn't changed for 200 years. You train this, you're going to be a Sifu. And you're going to be really good at this, okay? You can do all of this stuff like that. And then they go to the, face somebody who's a different style. They don't fight the same. Oh, how come it's like that? I can't make connection. Then that's too late because you're in the ring, you're in the cage. You know, going to get owned by this guy, right? So it's like that. Um, so you might even talk about style. You know, I'm talking about style. Look, it's, 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 it's a local stylist. And just, but a lot of people that, from MMA uh, people, they learn a lot of traditional art. They don't tell you. I mean, I got a friend from America came and told me in the part of America, they have so many UFC gym, there's so many guys who go in and train. They actually train from, uh, they actually from a various traditional art. They don't tell you about that. So what they do is that they use the art, the way they move or some techniques, they incorporate into the MMA rules, right? And then they fight with it. And yeah, they, and they right. start to that streamline it, but it's actually traditional, uh, you know, techniques. I mean, MMA is really basic from all traditional um, art to put them all together and then you make it your own, okay? Um, and, you know, in the traditional, ah, oh, it's like chop soy, chop soy, you know? You know? <laughs> they would discount that, but these people that discount it, they never been in the bloody fight in the first place. So why why did why did, why did, why did you not put a crap on other people? Like go like, people just have a go at it, you know? They might like lose on the ring. So you you survive another day. So could you imagine you got a platform that you can lose, you're not gonna get killed, but you can improve. You can come back and improve, right? It's like, how good is that? Like like if you go to uh like the old days we used to say, if a guy comes in and challenges us, we break their bloody nose and neck, they won't come back again. The guy that got broken nose and stuff like that, ribs and all that, they be you know recovering for months and all that, they won't come back to your good, right? But you won't get that, you won't get that severe injury in a UFC. But you when you get hit, you know, oh geez, I, I shouldn't do that next time. I should be more alert of this and you know, and train differently, you know, when the fighting is some, something different. But you get to fight with different people in the UFC. You see? A, a <laughs> lot, it's true. A lot of, a lot of uh, fighters do have a traditional background, be it karate, yeah. taekwondo. There's a lot of good fighters, and then they have to learn a little bit of uh, groundwork, or they'll, they'll cross-train uh, cross with some judo, so they got some throws. I mean, it's logical, right? If if the style doesn't teach throws in kung fu, and you and mm -hmm. one day you're going to get thrown, you're going to get yeah, thrown down. It, it, well, you know, Eric Paulson. I mean, he learned Wing Chun, you know, you know, and he learned Jeet Kune Do and all of that, and then copied in, in his pseudo wrestling and all that, and become a really awesome fighter, an awesome teacher, you know. Yeah, he and, showed he showed uh, a really good clip the other week back or last month with uh, that Kevin Lee guy uh, yeah. fighting from the ground using book sale and from yeah. when the person's on top of him, you know, if he's pulled yeah. guard and he, he he couldn't even get the a punch in. He just knew yeah. all the trapping from the ground. And that's yeah. smart, right? Because 
every martial art of Kung Fu, it's all about standing up and Bong Sao, Tan Sao, and they're doing all this. Yeah. But Eric Paulson has taken it to another level. He's, he's a genius, dude. Absolute genius. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll probably going to give some tips away how I train um, some of my students back in the days. We, you know, when when we um, when something do a close shoot, we're on down, we're on the guard, right? Most of people we're trying to cover. I teach them how to do a gaucho or peso, very short peso, and get power hitting the pad. So I'm I'm on, I'm mounting you as a coach, and I put the pad and go, you're gonna hit those pads. I'm gonna move those pads. You're gonna hit those pads. So therefore, you're striking even you're down. Now that goes against the, the traditional rules that you've got to be on stance, suck up the testicles, suck up the power, and then hit, right, and get power, right? When you're on, on the ground, then you've been mounted, and it pretty soon going to do an arm bow or leg lock on you, and you're going to start hitting, right? You've got to produce power right on your back. Now, most people will punch at that, and they can't get power, okay? But I teach my students to get power on the ground. On the ground. You're flat on the ground. You, you know, your back is pressed down. Um, and I remember, I remember my brother with Michael Darcy, they were at my place, and the two Michaels, you know, my brother said, no, you can't submit me on the ground. So, of course, Michael Darcy won all this fight. He's going to, I'm going to submit your brother, you know, because he was, he was a very strong competitor. And I saw he pulled Michael's arm out like that, just about to the arm by Michael pull his elbow back in, you know, the tongue one when you do the, yeah. the, the jong, so pull it back in, and he pushed, and he flipped that bridge over, and he pressed onto his face. He's actually choked Michael Darcy with his palm. That's how powerful my brother was, right? And then Michael just tapped at that. He said, shit, you know, how do you guys got this power on the ground? I mean, if, if, I, if, you, if I tell the traditional Tong Wong guy that, you know, so, oh, we know, we, you know, oh, we're training like this, he said, no, nah, no, nah, you got to be on the ground. You got standing on the feet and do this. You can't be on the ground doing this sort of stuff. But we didn't listen to all of that. Mm. So we, 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 we had to adapt. So we adapt different training methods. Um, like you think about people say, oh, the traditional way, we don't use these sort of jongs, you know? But you look at um, you look at Malcolm Sue, right? <laughs> They're jongs, right? They got they got two uh, two poles coming down on the chain, right? I think, and they do their to of, I think we're about to run out of time, so yeah, sure. Okay, we'll stop it here, and we'll be back in just a break, everyone. No worries, no uh, worries. We'll take off on that. I want to hear more about that, John. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. All right. Be back in a second. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're back with Sifu John Lee on the Tower of Kung Fu podcast. Let's get back to that John you're talking about. Tell us about how it works and that. Well, I mean, the the the, the fundamental of the, uh, the the first techniques I ever learned was was uh, the gasa, okay, which is coming out, opening the door, okay. So this this is the basic the, the two. The, the, the two uh, cylinder type of pole connect to the top and the bottom of the chain. You would just hit that across. And so you hit the cross, you cut back. And so, um, so when a punch comes in like that, you're able to stop it. So the thing, the first thing that I think uh, when Peter told me about it is, is still able to stop it, you know, <laughs> a hole or something like that, right? But, um, but then after that, you can actually use your pack style to hit this pole this part and then to pace out. So you do the pace out, pace out, pace out, pace out, gas out, or gas out, okay, you call it. And then in the middle of it, they would have a, 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 uh, <coughs> an iron bag, you know, iron palm to gouge for you, okay? So very, very basic. And then <coughs> it eventually got a few more poles, like one in the middle, so a bit more smaller in, the, in front and then the side. So you've got four and then you go boom, 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 you go in there. It's like you're, you're, you're going to someone's uh, territory of Iguan and you start hitting, you know? So so by hitting all the time, those poles, your, your arms get very, very, very strong, you know? Um, and also you can do poxo on to, as, as well because the poles like that, you can actually poxo onto a pole like that. So a pole like that, you can go poxo, you can go gas out. Okay, yeah. so it, move, it moves, and so it gives you that, that flexibility, right? Not just standing there like a solid mass, you can hit and bang, you can hear the 
the sound of the, the cylinder, boom, 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 you know, the, the tube, you know. Um, so that's, that's, that's the, what the jong's used for. And you can train various hands. I mean, even you, you, you can go outside and do what so, you know. I, I, think, I think the great thing about these arts, bro, are the conditioning of those jongs yes. that, that Western boxers don't have on the forearm. And, yeah. and trained correctly in a fighting context, the soy kill, bin choy, you, you say, yeah. you know, same same deal. Same deal, yeah, it's just a different name. Just it's different soy kill. Like, oh, yeah. Um, I think if connected correctly and aggressively, can take out the boxer's arms. Exactly. That's and, that's what that needs it needs to be needs to be trained to a high level. And like I always tell my guys, any hammer fist, soy kill, or bin choy, there's a circular movement, right? Yeah. Compared to a straight line. So you gotta yeah. have those hammer fists as fast as a jab, a straight line. Yeah, and that's that's you try to get to that that level. You can you can you compress us to that level that you can as fast as a jab, as fast as a cross. Um, and but you're 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 bisecting the center line so you're destroying their bridge. And then your hands are uh, like steel because you, you train your iron palm, your gao cho, your peso, you're gonna get very, very good at it. Um, yeah, and the, then yeah. and then then you you know, once you do that, then you spell reaction training, you know. Um, that's very important. Once you put there's certainly attribute that we train to put them all together. Uh, and then you will see, wow, you know, after six months, they really work, you know? And you, you know, I know for a fact that they work. You know, if they didn't work, I wouldn't teach you when I was a waste of time. So, um, but you've got, you've, got, you've, you've got to also be able to read the jabs. And they're so, and they're so quick that you haven't got time to even sometimes soy kill. It might be just a parry. And, and, yeah. this, and this is where you need, as a, a counter puncher or a counter striker, yeah, yeah, you need to be that as on top of just smashing bridge. You need to be a counter striker and and, a, and be on the offensive rather than defensive. Yeah. Make your offense your defense. Well, you, you, well, the old days we used to read that you know the shoulder moving and you know the way they move and boom, boom you know and. But you still got to react very quickly. Um, so, so I, I, I tend to use the advantage of the of the you know the matters bridge and you know and not extend all that like a dead bridge. You know, very 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 flexible, very responsive bridge. But I'm extended. So so I will get to his face before he gets to my face. So basically, the pox out would be my first weapon. Pox out or so you with my second weapon like that I use a lot to. Who engage this thing, you know? Get in there, boom, 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 boom. Slow it down, right? So See, I, I think um, for the people that are watching, these long arm bridge that Sifu John is talking about in Bat May, all the Haka arts. Yes. With all the principles of what he just said, the methods of conditioning and striking, understanding yeah. that your, your hem fist has to be as fast as a jab and across, but it allows us, the practitioners of the Hakka arts, to be closer to the opponent's body yes. compared to a guard like this in boxing. Yeah, right. because for me, uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't really demonstrate because I've got a, a student here. But I can, I can demonstrate. You can understand that if we're holding a fist like that, we're punching that. Then we, you know, this sort of art, we had to move, you know. But if you, if you got to reach out there like that, I got buffer zone. So you pass like you guan before you can get to me, but from there I'm gonna start closing my door, right? So, uh, so this was probably the first time when Peter taught me. That gave me a lot of confidence that I'm gonna win any 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 fight that come at me like that, with, you know, with the punches and all that. Before I couldn't really have stop how to stop it. But at the same time, you said you see a lot of Hong people. They're very stiff. They are the bridge is very stiff, and they go like that, right? So. They're using more muscle than tendon, right? So for them to respond to the soy kill, they got jab, boom. You know, he hits a, a different angle. You cop it, right? Because you're too slow. You're too robotic and you're too stiff and you're too heavy your arms. A heavy arm who comes in 
when you need to be heavy. When your arms will be light, fast, you're going to be fast. When you know how to do shock, you shock. It's a combination of power you play with the body, not just one power. So if you've got the ability to produce three, four different power, different way of moving, then the tonal is good. It's practical. It's supply tonal. Simple. I totally agree. I think uh, the, the bridge for us is so important to get close to your opponent so you can use those phoenix eyes with the wind yeah. strikes and just the yeah. Just a phoenix eye like that can just tear the skin. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yeah, well, you know, like just a, just a, just a, just a nick, you know, with, 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 with you know the phoenix eyes, right? Like you can it's very dangerous, okay? So but like this, okay, with, with the tongue long, right? You change so much with your bridge, right? And the reason why is you're able to but most people can't put their hands up like that for for, for a long time, but I do that all the time. And it's to me, it, it's not because I'm holding it up. I have the game already, it's been trained. My hands are stand up and very relaxed. It's not like this, hold on, this, I'm gonna get you, you come in the door. I'm not like that, I'm, 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 I'm relaxed, you know, I'm very relaxed, okay? So when you relax, you're responsive. If you start stiff and start to use your muscle and look like that sort of robotic, you're not gonna win the fight because it, People like Wing Chun, the little good Wing Chun player and those boxes, they will get you, get into your, your song, you know? All they have to move the side and they step in, that's it, you know? So, um, if my Gasa, okay, um, you know, long time ago, I used to go, I don't Gasa, you know? <laughs> and I expect that the punch is going to be here, I'm going to block his punch, block his bridge, and I'm going to start so cute, right? But what happened if you fake that one? First of all, you fake, and I put my hand up there, and I'm not responsive now, I've got no recovery. He, he faked this one here, and then all of a sudden he comes back here and punches me on the center line. And all I do is my rear hand here, but I'm too concentrated, sticking my arm out there and being stiff. You don't do that. You know what I do? <laughs> my power now is very, very different from the old days how I trained on long. I had to evolve a little bit too as well. So for me, for me, my hands are like that, but I'm flick. Boom. You see how fast my hand is? But yeah. when I hit something, it bounces off. So when I go boom, the hand's not going to come back. So because I don't want to play bridge hand with him. I just want to bounce this off, whack. That's it, finish, game over. Why do I have to do all these things and I'll bridge and I'll go on top of you and I'll go and I'll, you know, those bridge hand we used to play. Um, they, they, they work with somebody to play bridge with you. It's, 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 a, a, it's a method. It's not a, it's a drill is not the fight. It's a, it's a, a attribute to add to a fight, right? So if you're doing picky yeah. hands, chi sao, toy sao, any of that, yeah. it's only for that split second that when you've touched, boom, you've, you've counted with elbows or whatever. It shouldn't be the guy punching you, turn sao, this, this, and block it, block it, block it, block it. It's, it's not the way trapping should be, in my honest opinion. A technique like a trap, would only occur off against a guy going to push you, not so much as yeah. a strike. It's a different energy. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's, it's not clean train to do this. You got what's up. Yeah, it works. It works really well. But it, it has to be a, the right condition for that to work. But most people won't offer that condition for you. That's the environment for you to work like that. You, in your mind, you think I train all this thing. Why, why can't I use it? You know, it's like. But it's an entirely different thing. It's not playing your game. That's 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 the whole issue. So you got this attribute, but you only play that with people that want to play that game. They don't want to play that game. It's like this, all right? Okay. So if I know, like, okay, I know people. Uh, a few masters demonstrate their shot power like that. Okay. All right. So so the guy puts a bridge out there, and his shot goes. Of, of course, the bridge gonna fly. Because he he's giving a very static bridge and you shock him, of course, because something to pull on, it's going to look really good. But if you shock me, I'll just go like that, I circle the hand, where's the shock? It loses his power. So when you're talking about shock power, practical shock power, how do you actually use it? You know, like what technique do you use and when do you use it? You know, it's not because of the demonstration, you go, oh, like that, and I'll drag his hand forward. Like no one's going to give the hand like that and give you to drag forward. If you do drag him forward, he just head up you. Simple like that. You drag him forward, he head up you. Like yeah. something you gotta think about. I, I think a lot of people get really caught up about shock, shock power 
and it's oh, you know, shock power you can fight. But you still got to apply that shock power in the in the in the in the environment that you know your opponent might not give you that sort of advantage, you know, for you to do shock power. I, I just especially that, you especially know, if they're a mobile fighter, right? Shock power yeah. should, should be when uh, surprised. Boom, straight well, to the ribs. Boom, just break the ribs. Like, yeah, it, it's, it's a simulation, like a like a like a hot iron hit your hand like that, right? So you simulate that 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 power, but then you got to apply that power to the context of what you're trying to do, right? And your opponent is going to allow you to do that. But like, you tell up. me the shock power. Well, you know, like I said, yeah, we talk about shock power. Maybe it's a different interpretation. But you said that when you practice your. Um, your your one unit right? on your on, on your on your on your burning palm right um you hit the water snap snap your palm water and all of a sudden you can see one of the clip that you mastered the, the water to boom fly out the, the the big uh bucket right now when you tell me about shock power i think maybe you hit somebody they're in shock so there's shock power so it's a different interpretation of it they'll you, you know maybe the old master said when i hit somebody with a palm with a with a uh with a with a, with a art cotton palm and the guy goes into shock because he's he's transferring all the power in there so that's shock power not not necessarily you touch me and go like that and so shock power like you know and you know what i'm saying so exactly there, there's about, shock power there's shock power in the terms of just development but the true shock power to me it's when you hit someone like a palm that that yeah. that pain spreads to where they get into shock like like uh sifu connie when i went to the one yun to learn from him because yeah. he was a boxing trolley fight fighter back in the day and yeah. he said i'll i'll show you the difference uh, and he hit me arm with uh, a trolley fight palm knocked me across the room right yeah and then he goes, now do uh, the one new palm. And he went from nowhere, boom. And I did go in the shop. I started to shake. I got yeah. cold. And I had to sit down. I know it sounds like a pussy, but it was a, 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 an internal strike that shut me down. <laughs> and, and that's what shock power is. It, it stops the person before they can react again because the yeah. pain... And and the nervous system shuts down to where they they, they don't know what's going on for us. Well, yeah, yeah. For many seconds, it just shock, and then that's how I see shock power too as well. You know, yeah. and when when we talk about shock power, it's not necessarily just a, it's a simulation. Someone touches your 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 arm and you, you pull back, and you know, and you try to simulate that. Look, the 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 form as far as know as far as study. You cup sample gene is to simulate the shock. I mean, Silver Paul explained that in the video, but I don't see many people doing that. They actually can do eight movements very fast, but there's some shock power in it. Are they, are they doing it more as a one, two, three? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the, they, do the, they, they do the shock movement, I don't see shock power. And also, how do you measure the shock power from those hands? Do they hit anything else and show you? If they if they if they got if, if they got a, a if you got a, a, a like like a not very big heavy bag, just say that you got a a, a, a five kilo or a ten kilo bag, so that and, and inside the, the bag are heavy, right? I'm talking about pedals, iron shot, beans, whatever you're putting on that, and you put your hand at that, and you're gonna do short distance, three inch, and boom, and that bag bounces off half a meter on that on the, on that side. You're able to move it, then. I can see you got shock power because you shocked it really fast and that bag just went boom like that and that bag is very heavy. And then, then like, some people tell me, look, I don't want to name the guys who tell me all of this, right? He said, I tap, tap, tap and the, and the bag shakes a little bit. The chi is in, inside the bag. I'm going, really? Really? I don't believe that. Oh, yeah, you can hear the sound when you hear it, and the sound sounds different, you know? This master hits it, and you can hear the sound different. It's just the way it hits its angle. Like, if you want to make the back shake, you hit at an angle down there, of course, you hit the force of going at an angle of 45 this way. Of course, it shakes a little bit, but is that really the shock power? I don't think so. Is it really, just going, to, is it really going to do damage? That's the, that's the bottom line. Yeah. 
And, and, and how do you measure that? Look, I'm in one little guy from the, from the States, right? He said to me, uh, simple John, you know, <laughs> they bloody hate you, you know, because you're a bit more scientific than anything. I was, I was, I was looking on the net, looking for like, a shock, um, a, a device that measure the shock, right? You put inside this bag, and I would take this bag, this to the master, and I hang it up, you hit it, and I'll, I'll extract that, that shock. Shock uh, that you know, like a seismic thing, you know, measure the shock and see how much shock's going to naturally in the bag. Then we know there's no lines, it's all scientific data. Well, well, the, well the, <laughs> the, 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 just say, for instance, you've got those boxing uh things where they hit it and it tells you how many pounds per square inch or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it gives you a reading. Now, that, yeah. would be, that would be perfect to test your shock power if you're exactly. not getting close to a boxer's punch off that and we will believe that the short shock power should have that type of force right yeah yeah it shouldn't be just a flick otherwise i can parry i don't need to learn all this shock power if i can parry someone and just rip a little tap that sends the arm away yeah. arms away then you don't need to do all of this forms right. and all this other so for me yeah. if, you're, if you're doing short power that short power has got to be able to do as much damage as a normal strike. Exactly, because what you got, you got you you, you got the victor, and you got the the, the, the distance to, to, to you know to, to get that power through, and, and it's kind of wide, yeah. Like it's like doing a big pack cell to a small pack cell, you know, like a little circle, yeah. big circle, you know, or, or a small hammer fist or to the big hammer fist, you know, which one's gonna do more damage? Of course, the one with the big distance gonna get it because the momentum, the weight, and you know, your body move into it, and of course you're gonna get the damage, but uh, if you say I'll do a little movement, is it going to equal the, the same this same sort of power with those long range, you know, hit? It's maybe not. You know, like uh, I I don't see anybody can demonstrate that in front of me and, and convince me otherwise. You know, so I'm I'm still waiting. Someone can just show that in front of me uh, or hit hit the one those those uh, apparatus that, or those game thing that they hit it and see how many pounds they got. Like how many pounds can you actually hit something? The register, you know, I'm, I can do hit this and it's going to register like 10 kilo, 20 kilo pounds or so. I don't, I don't know what you call the measurements, yeah. But like it's one of those amusement parties, see the people punching it, you know, and uh, you know, some are really hard hitters, you know, so yeah, they're right over a thousand pounds of force, yeah, something like that. I mean, I, I, I'm not into that sort of thing, but I wouldn't like you just mentioned to me that that is perfect. Uh, uh, apparatus to measure the type of power that you exert out from your hands. Yeah, I'd, like love to, to, I'd love to have one of them and try the short boom hammer and see if I can get as much power rather than a big bin toy, just a short and try to bang and, and get that same power and that's refinement of gain. Just like when yeah. I pick a coconut from a dis short distance yeah. with, the, with the breath and then the body's coiled and boom, Right, I need mean, oh, yeah. to try to get that same power without trying to smash it like that. Yeah, and yeah. That's a refinement that takes a long time. And and, and the thing is that with this sort of equipment that's available, that you can actually you can measure your progress, right? You know, you might not be very good at the first three months, but then after four or five months, you'd be bloody awesome, you know. You know, because you know there's a reading there. Oh wow, they are increasing so much, you know. So it's to it help your training, and I mean, using different equipment to, to train to to help you, you know. Um, I mean, why did Brucey get this stream to wear all this equipment so you can't buy in the street, buy in the gym? He, 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 he one of the, the specific uh, type of well, different reasons, you know, that he's trying oh, he, to this. Bruce Lee had a, a 300 pound bag, just like yeah. a, a boxing, a big boxing bag that weighs so much that you can't, you can't send that flying, but over time it builds that power and the whole yeah. body connectivity to when you do hit someone that's lighter, they're going to, they're going to fly, right? They're going to feel that. So yeah. that's why boxing gyms have heavy bags and they've got light bags, they've got speed balls, they've got, uh, timing yeah. the ceiling balls as well. So uh, there, there is science behind punching to develop yeah. one punch, one for speed, one for reflex, one for heavy bag, right? Yeah. And so that's how they get good. Yeah, and, then, and yeah, they're getting better and better. 
that's why the, you know you see the the boxing matches or the you know the MMA box, uh, matches. You see the, this all these new fighters. They can you know they got shot power. They got short power. The power is quite you know they, they can do a jab and a cross. It doesn't have to be so telegraphic. I mean, when you start facing a person like this, a different animal. <laughs> you know, it's not the seventies. Oh God, it, oh, and you're gonna go and go like that. It's not like that anymore. Like. Um, I, I think it, it, it when uh, of Joe Lewis and all that is they you know, started uh, the Chuck Norris and you know, the kickboxing in America. That was, that was a, 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 a revolution, really, because until then, still people were still standing on the stand and, and trying to kick and trying to punch, you know. And so, um, it's all like karate, fighting karate the way it's karate should be fight at fought, right? But then, next thing you know, they went to kickboxing and said, Well, this is different because I move now, you know. So. They can, they, they had evolved. I mean, now it's like they got even better and better. Or, you know, I was shocked to see some of the uh, fights that they can do jab and cross such a small distance and get such a power. Bang, bang, bang. And, and you can see when they, you know, when you see Mike Tyson, that type of people that trains in the gym, I mean, they're three, four, five hundred different ways and, and within less than a second or second. Look at the power from the pad. Like bang, 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 bang. It's like they all knock out punches. So you're dealing with, with a, a totally different animal, you know. So if you don't up your game, your kung fu, you, you're not, you're not gonna, you're not even in the game, mate. Well, you especially know, kids, uh, like I said in our first one, a lot of kung fu, they they don't move the head, right? It's got to keep level and body. Yeah. Straight and that's yeah. another flaw to me. That's another flaw because in reality, if someone, to say for instance, all your life you've been training mantis. Someone, yeah. if something swings at you, what do you do? You get out the way. It's not it's just a punch. it could be a, a, a something falling from the shelf and you move. It's a yeah. reflex action. And if you're not building yeah. on just that, even body defense, head movement, expect to get hit. Even if you've got the best strong bridge, you're going to get hit in a fight. It doesn't matter. And another thing, uh, Benny the Jet Yukitas, right? Yeah. He proved against the Thai boxers. He beat Thai boxers as well. Yeah. Um, Sifu John Subtle, my kickboxing teacher, did yeah. a demonstration fight with Benny the Jet back in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he was one of, Benny the Jet was one of his idols, he told me. You know? yeah. he, said, he gave me a tape of VHS against, watch all of Benny Yakita's fights because this yeah. guy's awesome. And he actually got to fight Benny the Jet uh, in a yeah. in a demonstration match, and and Benny kept saying him because I saw it, and he goes, "Hit me," you know. But John Subtle was like in love, not in love, but respected him so much that he goes, "Oh yeah. my God, I'm in the ring with Benny the Jet," you know. Yeah. And Benny's going, "Hit me, hit me," you know, because he yeah. the respect, but. People like that, they're pioneers of the new era. Benny the Jet, uh, yeah. Joe Lewis, and the Joe Lewis, Lewis, yeah. Superfoot, uh, Bill uh, Wallace. Bill Wallace. Yeah, Bill Wallace. Yeah. I went to one of these seminars here in Australia back yeah. in the 80s. He, he was like, like Bill Wallace was super super kicky and you know, super foot, you know, like this is phenomenal. And and this, you know, like it's 80 something now, I was teaching. How he moves, you know, like, and then it's like it's, this is how he moves, and it's like, there's a way that he gets into the song and, and whack you with a kick, you and, know. And so he, and he was like, he's good with both legs, but one leg he can smash it in any direction. You'll never yeah. get it. You never get it because you know he, he he had he had refined that kick, you know. So if if he was just following the the tradition the old way and never really explore new ways, then then. He just stayed where he was, you know, but he didn't. The all these people like Ben in the chair, um, you know, John Suttles and now all these other Bill Wallace and Joe Lewis and all these other fighters, they, they, they explore, uh, you know, a way of, of, of better themselves in, in the way they fight, you know. I mean, look, uh, I remember, I remember the Chuck Faye once and asked him about this, you know, because when I went to see Chuck Faye, right, um, I was only a kid then, he, he was teaching karate, you know? I said, why are you teaching karate? You're a double dragon, you know? He said, no, um, it's a karate, um, the way he was teaching kickboxing then, I said, mate, it worked. He said, no, this is a, this is just, yeah, traditional, but yeah, you, you know, some punch on that, can you really just block like that? 
it's too fast, you know? So you, you, you know, the outer block like that, it, it, it has to be, the guy had to stick his arm out like that, but it's not retrieving and you're, you're, you're perfect fit, but he's just got it like that, then it punches again, then, you know, you're, you're, you're slow, you know? So that's why we do kickboxing. I remember he went, uh, told me that, that's why we do this kickboxing uh, training. But, you know, like when, the, when you go in there and you're thinking, I've got to learn traditional Kung Fu, why don't I keep them kickboxing? But in fact, he's trying to tell you that those kickboxing moves actually work. It was a you know, revolution that we didn't really understand, you know, for, okay, we'll just do Kung Fu, why are we doing kickboxing, you know? But, like, you, I see they benefit you a lot, you know, because you know Yao Kung Fu and you know kickboxing and you, you, you can make the two work together and better yourself. Like, Anything is, is better than... But you've, got to, uh, yeah. you've got to look at, okay, what does Tong Long have that is similar to normal fighting, as in kickboxing and boxing? What have they got for straight lines? What have they got for hooks? What have they got for uppercuts and overhands? And then you go through your, your forms and then you go, oh, there, there's your straight line punches, right? There's a... You might have a a, a, a sal toy, but you're short in that uh, sal toy, right? Rather yeah. than big sal toy, just a small, small little boom. It's only an elbow yeah. bang like that, and it's over. Rather than here it comes. <laughs> well, let's let's put it this way. I did. I don't do much intro like that. You know, we do a thousand times in the form. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna. Uh, Make people think about this, okay? Uh, so I, I'm like that, I'm, I'm loose, right? I'm going boom, boom, okay? All right, that's my jab, okay? Now I'm doing my jin choke. It's always come to come back the elbow, predict the ribs. What is faster? <laughs> what is faster? And if I want to change the angle, I'm, I can't change much of the angle because I'm, I'm always going to come back like that, right? But the, the, with the punch, right, I can go like that, like that, like that, like. The jab become a cross, half a cross, half of uppercut. I mean, I can, it's, it's so versatile, it's so natural, but we are talked to like that, hit like that. So, so, so we move forward like a, like a mantis and hit like that. And then when it hits the summit, we'll block with a thousand, you know? And so I never use this technique. I know it's, it sounds crazy. I do this in the form a thousand times, but I actually don't use it like that. Mm. Yeah, well, same I as. Don't, I don't, you, you gotta you gotta adjust it to street or competition. You can't what you do in forms is not always applicable when it comes to street. Like I said, a lot of power training in this, there's a lot of rib training, back training, all the different bucking, you know, that needs to be developed in these arts. And you got Fal Chum Tunto, like in Bat May, Yokelman. And you look at yeah. boxers when they're bobbing and weaving and, and they, they're using that, uh, just say they go to a body shot, they got chum. And then yeah, yeah. they come back up, boom, they got the yeah. guy. So they got foul chum in boxing. Yeah, they do, they do, they do. Foul chum in boxing, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just not the right head, yeah. It, yeah. And, they got foul and there's people that don't understand that and say, oh, you know, they're, just, they're very simple. They're not simple. It's it. The, the technique might be simple, but the, the way that they apply it is not simple. It's, there's a lot of angles, a lot of movement, um, head movement, they're not staying still. So, you know, the, the Tong Long as far as I know, I never really used the Jin Choi. I just tell people that. My, 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 my weapon is my gaucho. The, the way I do it, Pax Sao, Pax Sao, Pax Sao, gaucho. And I remember a long time ago, when I first started Tong Long with Peter, he said, he said, um, he wanted to see some use food for technique and won all this competition in Southeast Asia. I don't know who he's referring to, right? But years later, I, I taught uh, a bunch of guys, all right? And there was, um, there was a, uh, I think, 19 year old kid called Adam Er, right? And he, he came with a friend and he said, My name's Adam, you know? And, uh, and then one of his friends told me, Oh, you know, uh, his father used to do Tong Wang too. I said, Really? I said, what's his name? He said, his father's James Burr. So I went back to backtracking, you know, the, the information, you know, from the old days, computer and all that. And I found out, oh, he's actually um, a brother of Dominic Burr. 
and Tom and, uh, and you know, and James uh, and, 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 you know, there's a few a doctor from Malaysia, Chinese Malaysian, they were training, in, you know, the early days in Brisbane when uh, Ned Yun came in and, you know, told them this sort of stuff and they evolved from there. So I went to see James Er uh, and he said to me, John, there, there isn't that much techniques in Tong Lao. You know, the, the usable ones only three or four. Like that's from, from the guy, like when I met him, I was in my late 30, he was like, 50 or 60, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just that there isn't that much techniques in Tong Lao. But you only use three or four techniques to, 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 for, for your bread and butter technique and it worked. And so, but you know, he was doing the same technique that I, that I was got taught, like, you know, the, the destructive technique, you know, so you kill and all that, pay so. He was into pay so. And pay so has got like, most people think, oh, there's only one pay so, you know, you go, <laughs> some will pay you. There is, there is, there's a few more pace on different angles. They, they haven't really explored on that. Look, that's a Jing Pei. Like Jing Pei come in like that. All right, that's Che Pei. That's a one Pei, okay? Side line. Right? You come in there, boom, right there, okay? There's Che Pei down there. Yeah, but see, and, what, and, see and, what you just did? See what you just yeah. did? You've moved your body. <laughs> yeah, but I have to. You have to. Otherwise, because you're of, stuck one dimension. Because if you stand there and the kick comes in and hits you that way, well, this way, it's giving you a full impact. But if you move a little bit this way, it might still hit you, but the impact isn't there. Mm. You, you see, you're taking the, you're taking the impact off it because it, you're, 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 you're moving a different angle. Oh, how could I answer this? Sorry. All right, it's, it's okay. We'll take a break now and we'll be Yeah, you can back. take a break. All right. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, we're back with Sifu John Lee on the Tower of Kung Fu podcast. We had a little break and we'll get back onto the short power. And I think with all the different, even with Soy Kill, John. Yeah. Uh, there's a, like your Gal Choy where you detach, there's a short Soy Kill, middle range and long range. I yeah. think all of them need to be trained to a high level if we rely on smashing a bridge or destruction all the time, a lot of students get so comfortable of, oh, I've hit his arm, but they're not expecting the other hand to come through. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, I, I think let's touch on another subject, right? I didn't want to expand on that, but that's, we, were, we were talking about pace and all that and different angles and all of that. Um, and so in the form, we, you know, um, very the basic form, we only learn one, one pay cell, which is the, uh, the one pay, right? Which is a you know, cross pay on the side, right? So, um, but when you do pay cell, you always have this hand up anyway, you know? Um, but a lot, of, um, a lot of Chinese Kung Fu tend to have the hands cover around uh, the mid range, right? And not the head, right? So, um, so, do we go like that and punch like that, right? And you probably would do that if you're in the ring, right? You hit somebody, he move, and, and it's already, the kicks already come in. You hit you, the kicks already arrive. The, the kicks so fast now, and they're coming, coming at you. And if your hands down, then you're going to get kicked, right? So, so a lot of a lot of the concept we learn in kung fu, a lot of the formula in kung fu, we, we kind of in the mid range, you know, our hands cover. Now, when we when we're doing fasal, right? We do. When we learn about Fasal, we go one hand here, stuck here, and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we do the left hand, and then we do both hands, okay? Right, so um, if you train like that all the time in Fasal, okay, <laughs> um, what's, the, what's, what's the other hand doing? It comes to, that will become too much of a bad habit. Exactly, because what happened is that you you would get lazy. We call lazy hands, right? But then you do two hands like that. You are attacking. You're attacking low to you know to uh, to, to you know to to got to, uh, the pressure point down here. Then beauty, then fun kill, then wood cell, then dao cell, and then uh, you do this, right? Do you actually do that in a real fight? You don't do that. 
So your technique has to be uh, um, in, in Cantonese, it's Gong Fong, okay? Must have the two elements. Gong is to attack, Fong is to protect yourself at the same time, right? Gong Fong. So, so I don't do the facility anymore. I just do it my way. That I think is very, very, uh, it's got the two elements in it, right? Like Gong Fong, okay? Um, so I did play my facile the way I do it, both hand alternating. Uh, to a lot of people, to a few, a few, few of the elders, you know, and, and the the Chao Ga, not Chao Ga, Chu Ga people, especially one of the Chu Ga people, so it's in my fast and he bring me back and he said, mate, this is fantastic stuff. How'd you do that? I said, because it didn't, it, it, it didn't, it didn't sound not logic to me, you know, because I learned uh, all these forms and when we got the fast so we've gone back to the you know, single hand and double hand, we weren't alternating our hands. And, Nothing like you know the other form that we were doing, so so that made me think about uh, the forms itself and how you actually interpret it, um, and, and and taking the science out to actually test it against something that punch really fast. How do you actually pull those techniques off? And if you can't, then you have to find a way of modifying it because if you don't, you're going to get hit anyway. I mean, you know, do I do a pace out like that and like that? Cuff of the heart because some of them punch me in the heart. Well, most of the time people don't want to punch you in the heart. They just want to hit, hit your head and hit the central computer and knock you out. And this is why that when we were first learning the Tong Long from um, from Malcolm, but not from Malcolm, from Peter, it's like that we're head hunters. I remember the first time he said to me, sitting down with Sylvia, that's like somebody said, we're head hunters, John. That's why our hands are always up. We're not going to mid range like that. We're not going to go like that. Our hands are always up because you, you have to protect yourself from, from these uh, punches, you know, from kicks and all of that. And, um, and, and when, we, when, we, when we go in to hit somebody, we rather hit the head and concentrate on hitting the head and the neck, everything like that, rather than trying to hit the body. So that was the thing that he, you know, he was always telling me that we're head hunters. <laughs> a lot so, of, I think a lot of Parker uh, always stick on that mid range, mid gate. Yeah, yeah. And and everything's because, touched from the heart. A, there's a lot of power from here. I understand there's pat like your power source plus yeah, your, 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 del your deltoid yeah. as well. As soon as you start yeah. punching upwards, it's a yeah. different muscle group in in the deltoids, right? But um, yeah. there's lots of power from the mid range, uh, mid game out. And, yeah. And I understand that. But again, that can become a bad habit. And a lot of people, Thai boxers, boxers, they can cop uh, body punches pretty well. Right. And if you have, oh, even if they've got the Phoenix eye going to the, to the heart, do that, do that. okay, some right. Yeah, yeah, right. Then it, it's it all depends on if you've trained that well enough to withstand a hard body. Well, the thing is, also he's moving as well. He, he can be two degrees out of that. The thing is, not going to be that effective in the the gay sum. But while you're doing that in the gay sum with the feng chui, your head's open. Your head. So for every for every attack, like I said, my, I learned this from really good. For every attack, you got to sit one more. See, women, I mean, it's like, uh, it's like you do business and you've got a door that you're going to lose money. So every opening you're trying to hit, you're going to have a sip of And you have to try to, try to narrow close that sip of moon, close that, that, that gap, you know? So so he's also another guy that, that, that in, inspired me a lot about Gong Fu, you know, the concept of Gong Fu, okay? And not just train as you've been told, you know? Like he, he was, he was, he was, a, he was a very witty guy, you know? Like, old guy, you know, and he, you know, he, you know, he obviously had some fight in his, his, his days. Well, and uh, and fight. obviously, obviously he's thought about it. That's the good thing, right? That's the start of any real warrior in the martial arts is you've got to be able to pull apart these techniques and know what they're actually used for. You can't gox our hand that's coming so fast, but off a grab, you can gox out that, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at you and gox out. But he, he, he waited for some punch and gox So you got, and he already, he just fake and boom, and so fast. I mean, I can do three punches. Look at that. Less than half a second. 
Like, if, if I do this all the time, bang, 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 and by 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, 80 pounds, 100 pounds from the punches, it's going to hurt you, you know? Like, so it's very really logical that, you, you know, it's how you, how you, how you train, it's how you fight. Like, I can't stress more than that, but, but the form looks beautiful. I know it does look beautiful. It, it's, it's, it's very nice to train. Very nice and, to train. This is, and this is probably the hardest thing for us as well because we love the art so much. We know yeah. that we know that it's important to have the forms, right? Because the forms give you all the techniques that the founder has worked on. Them, yeah, worked on and put in the category that you can understand, that you can go progress on it, right? And I feel like it gives you some time as a one just follow what I've been taught, you know, and why I'm changing all of that and discarding that. But, but you know, it's like a, 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 a you know, in Canada, it's a you know, the, the, the constant battle inside your mind, you know, you know, so I do this, not do that. So I do that, not do that. So then you sit around and say, I've got to do what I, this, do what for me. Because what worked for somebody 300 years ago may not work for me right now. I need to, I need to deal with some, some different animals coming at me on the street, or in, you know, if I was younger in the ring, I have to think about like this, you know. So I have to change the way it, it's been used and applied, and the way we're training it. So, so what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. It's just individualism. Your kung fu is your kung fu. So this is why that you know, like I, 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 I don't like people writing on coattails of the past masters. You know, oh, my sequel can do this. My grandmaster do this, and my sequel used to sit on this board deal with all the masters, and he's famous, so I'm famous. Come on, man, <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> you know, I'm saying, that, you know, the people that I'm talking about, you know, they yeah. all bring in this, all this stuff like that. Well, what about you? Can you do your kung fu? Can you bring your kung fu up to the stage and you can beat those anime guys? Even with the gloves, I don't care. Even the ring with rules, you can beat them, then your kung fu is good. The like Grandmaster master, the way to say, hey, the proof is in the pudding. If it works, it's good kung fu. If it doesn't work, change it. Make it to be good kung fu. That's you know, it. that's logic. That's bloody logic. That's bloody logic. You know, what kind of people can't see that? But they, because we're blinded by traditions and stuff like that, a lot of time, you know, we can't change what's been passed on to us. And not only well, and not only that, I think a lot of no. not a lot of teachers are not fighters at heart, and therefore the forms they don't understand a lot of those movements in a reality way that it's not efficient in real fighting. Uh, in the class of one step sparring, and they're doing this type of stuff, and you can block and punch and do all this is not going to be in reality. So uh, there's, there's, a difference, there's a difference between a fighter and an artist. Yeah, well, the, well uh, you know, like you can clearly see uh, persons that does every to to the correct move, every move, everything hasn't been changed for the last three hundred years. To me, they're collectors. The collectors of the thing they don't want anything change, and there's like emotionally things attached to it too as well. My sister told me that I don't want to change this anything that my sister taught me. You know, it's the respect for my sister and my grandmaster. I'm not gonna change anything, so I'm gonna stay the way it is. I'm gonna teach the next generation the way it is. Then you get teachers like me and you say, "Hey, man, we we got a different animal that we're gonna fight now. We have to change. We can't stay the same. It's like it's like me, right?" <clears throat> Okay, let's talk about not kung fu. Okay, let's let's put this in perspective. I'm a stone polisher. Okay, years ago they used the old Italian Casani machine. They were heavy. Um, they were using silicon carbide to grind the floor. And I don't remember the Italians who met cost. You know, they used to do this work, marble polishing and grinding. They used to charge a lot of money. You know, and then then came. Later on, a few group of people said, now we're going to use diamond, we're going to use planetary machine. And then they brought it to the next stage. And those guys with the Cassandra machine, they weren't making any more business. They were too slow. This is getting much better. And now we've got remote control, AI control machines. That I don't know how to push the bloody thing. It's programming with joystick. So you see how far the human race, had, you know, with the knowledge and everything like that, they had to advance. But we are chosen to be saying the way we were 300 years ago. You think about it. I don't know. To me, I'm just one of those guys that looking for advancement all the time. 
old wisdom, but new advancement. You know, I think, okay, they do this way, we do that one. Like a lot of things, I asked a lot of master about being math and all this stuff like that. Really, are you, are you kidding yourself? Like the old days, when you hit somebody being math and it's, oh shit, I got, you know, hit this on, and I'm gonna, you know, there's a certain day, certain time, and I had to, I had to use some medicine or hit again to release the, the pressure upon. Otherwise, I would, you know, my heart would start to get very weak, or my kidney and livers, all the internal organs kind of go haywire, and I would die. Okay, so I need a mask to, to release me. So that may happen one or two cases, long time ago, and maybe this these masks that actually use that to heal, right? But this day, you're going to use this to hit somebody. Who's going to let you stand there? You did mapping, then you're gonna release him. How many people are gonna stand in front of you and you're gonna do that to that person? Seriously, like, yeah. so it's, it's, it's a kind of like, um, it's a knowledge, okay? It's a knowledge, but you're not gonna bloody use it. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna use it. And, and if you use it, can you actually hit the pond? Like, I spoke to one of the guy in um, USA, Joklam, about Lam Sang, right? And Lam Sang, you know, they all, you know, they do the, the Phoenix Fist and, uh, the deep mana. And this senior guy told me that he talked to his Sifu and he said, Sifu, that Lam San will say, not all the time you hit it, you get the pawn. You just get close enough to it and see the effects of it. But, you know, like some people will say, I hit the cock chi, then I hit this and I hit that and we'll have a thing on that. And you got to do two to three hits correctly at the right time, right day, right hour, right minute, right second to affect this person. Man, that's a lot to ask. I just think that this is like a, to me, it's more of a, like a, a very difficult task, almost like a fantasy, okay? But if you hit somebody with a punch in the, in the head, it's going to go down anyway. So that's I'll right. Go. And, and, and Denmark's type of striking uses too much medical theory, right? Five elements, yin yang, <clears throat> hit head, fire burns, metal, metal chops, wood. Big as a fuck in real life. Uh, uh, I, I got to try and get me job done and get out of there fast. Uh, I I don't know what you're gonna, I don't know what you're going to throw at me, right? So I'm not going to be waiting for this t- opportunity. I got to set something up, hit you in the throat, poke you in the eye, kick you in the nuts. Then I can finish you off or take off myself. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's it, 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 it's almost like, you know, like to me. It's very strange. Who uh, the people that, that teach you this sort of stuff like that, you know, like, you know they hit the guy and the guy goes down and it revive him, you know, rub his back and then he goes, I mean, how many times can you hit the person until it's not effective? And would it be stupid enough for you to, to, to test on them? You'll test dummy. You, you, you want this, your student to be a test dummy, you hit them and then you revive them just for your own sake, your knowledge, right? Oh, I read this book, it does, uh, I got passed by the grandmaster, it does work like that, only you seem to hear it. Like, there's a, there's, a, there's a moral obligation as well in today's world. You, you can't keep doing that to a person. And you, you can't do that to a person. How can you know that the mask going to bloody work? You know, it, it, could be, it, it could be off of a day or, or, or the hours different. I know it's that deal with the tide in the ocean or that. We all if, that, if that's the case, Boxers are the best Div Mac fighters because they can do liver 13, liver punch, right? Just they just aim for the liver and they still knock you out. Yeah. They, they still hit you in the head, they knock you out. They still hit your jaw, break your jaw. Right? So <laughs> exactly. they, they've never sat there and studied the sums up look, say you points. They haven't sat there and studying all this fucking rubbish when it's it's medical, right? It's like okay, it's I'm med- I've been hit here, okay, then you can go to your acupuncture or the DIMMAC chart and know exactly yeah. what you can be uh, using for the, treatment. The and the herbs and all yeah, like that, right? Yeah, the treatment. But, but it's like, you know, I don't seem in one case out of a thousand you're going to get hit like that. Like, seriously, how many people have heard it? Like, like I heard the odd story, I oh, got hit and he healed him, but but there's not there's no fact check. There's no fact check that it's actually happened. Like... You know, you, you think about all of this, is so you really got to test some people. It's like, it's like the old days, you know. Um, you know, they, they, they you know, uh, the Japanese is sometimes atrocious, right? In, in the war in China, they, you know, the Nanjing massacre, it's about body, it's cut and load and see what's inside the body, how the body works. And I mean, you got to really sacrifice people to, 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 
uh, to, to, to knowledge to your, your, your dim map, you know, you're going you're gonna to do some damage to people to, to find out if that actually worked in the book. But I, I, I think, think I, could have it been possible that they've used prisoners to test out their dim mag. So they might be tied up and they go, okay, I'm going to fucking punch him right yeah. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sternum or yeah, yeah. do this and test their skills that way, yeah. that wise. Do you reckon that could have been? That could happen to because why, why not? They used to inject uh, different substances and chemicals into the Chinese prisoners and see how they react. You know, like there's a lot of atrocious stuff that happened happen to the war. How how would they, 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 they I mean the Japanese know the matches as much as the Chinese. Why wouldn't they test on the Chinese prisoner, you know, in the war? And, they, they kill and, and what about um people that are on drugs? Because sometimes the pain tolerance is completely different. I, I've always had to deal with ice addicts at the hospital. So putting on restraints and that these people don't feel a lot of pain and it's such a it's such a hard topic this dim mac because it's such a big seller right everyone yeah. wants that mystic, mystical type of i can finish him yeah. in one strike but yeah. you've got boxers that have fought in the ring and they've killed people with gloves on yeah People have died in boxing matches. In the, even yeah. to this day, there's been deaths. So they obviously got better ding than most Kung Fu guys to be able to transfer yeah. through a glove and still kill a guy in the ring. Exactly. And look, I think we saw enough clips on this line you know, and I don't think all those are fake masters. They must have went up there to try to dim that on, on, you know, on these fighters and didn't work, okay? Because they weren't standing still. Maybe they were still and they said, you stand there, you don't move, I'll hit you a few times and you will go down and probably it will work. But when they're moving, they're resistant, their bodies all pump up, it's hard to get into your leg. Look, I said, look, like I said, if you do your ginger fist like that and you close it, your cook tea, pawn, the cook tea is closed. Or partially closed. So when you hit me on here with a palm or phoenix, it, the, it, it, won't, it won't numb my arm that fast, okay? If you use a phoenix, maybe not so close. That's why we use ginger. But then you trade off your ginger to the phoenix, right? So, but how, how easy to hit this when I'm, my arms are moving? It's very, very hard to hit this. When I'm moving, punching you, you're trying to hit this and you're trying to hit the pawn, but he's already hitting your head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, why are you chasing because, a pawn? Yeah, you're chasing a needle thing, to, a needle pawn uh, that is so small to get effectiveness, but he already hit you because your target's so bloody big he can hit you, he's going to get you first before you get anything done, right? So logically, it doesn't bloody work. That's just my opinion, you know? I, that's, I can't... It's, like, I've got a lot of people come to me a lot, a lot of my students, you know, in the early days, ask me all this, and I couldn't answer them. I said, I don't know how to answer you. You know? I, can't do it like that. I mean, I. Well, I it's, it's, it's easy to grab someone's wrist and go whack and knock them out on the. And then knock them down and you try to revive them on those pawns. But but the thing is that they're not. He's, allow, like he's allowing that for you to demonstrate. If you've got a boxer doing this you, and, and he's closed off his Gook G with his elbow again, you're never going to get Gook G. You're never going to get Gook G. And the thing is that. If, you, if, if your student allow you to do that, your, your conscience as a seepul, you know, what about you hit him so many times, he's slated alive, he's going to have all this health issue, and you caused it. Yeah. Your seepul is supposed to build him up so he can protect himself, but you're, you're actually damaging his body for your own sake. Now, how could you leave yourself? It's a conscience thing. So they're like, and, and, yeah, and, I would and, never and, and you don't know look. what the other person's internal health is like already. I mean, <laughs> I think mean, for the last month or something like that, um, I think uh, one of my students, Gordon, you know, is with the part of UTS. He wanted to do a, a seminar. And, you know, before he even got in there, I wrote a, a thing. I said, if you've got a health issue, ring me, you know, let me know. You know, if you've got any other own injury, let me know. 
So I know as a trainer to do um, to get what sort of exercise for you to do. It's not gonna yeah, you know, if you can't if you if you've got a problem with the back, I'm not gonna give you those exercises. You know, I'd rather you do something else. So I need to know. It's gonna be responsible. So responsible teaching you need to know. Yeah. Yeah, responsible teaching is always yeah, you have to you know. And, and and this this day, people still think that you know you can trash go into a room and trash somebody about your business. That's crazy too. You know that's really crazy because this day, like we're talking about, we're just going to touch on our subject. You know why a lot of the women are closed because it's insurance so bloody expensive. And my days is that when we um, when we got the spot Australia, you know. Uh, eight, uh, Accreditation with more missing hand, more of that, and when got gone into that bloody thing, and I went to the insurance people. I got this uh, accreditation coaching, and by number one from more missing hand, and I spent I mean, three, four, five hundred dollars. So the insurance guy said, "No, well, that doesn't make any difference. I'm just going to charge you two grand to uh, for public like you insurance for the hall. Then you got to pay your uh, each place in pay insurance of fifty dollars a year, and then it all end up by three and a half grand." For me to start hiring a hall, I don't even own the bloody hall, right? And and this is in the two thousand onward, right? Before that, I don't know when Peter hired a hall. They had all this restriction. Nowadays, you have got a lot of things. They didn't want to hide a hall to you. So so a lot of people think that you know you're coming into my group and you're going to challenge me and you're going to break my arm and and and, and, and damage all my uh, students. My it's not about your CCTV camera. Go ahead and do it. I'll sue the bloody ass off you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. let's get real. If you want to really challenge people, go to the UFC. Go and face some real fight. Single. That, that, <laughs> that, that's the bottom line. If you want to go and fight, go into competition. I keep saying it. You can't be going around to different schools and bashing up uh, people that are lesser yeah. level and, yeah. and being, a big, being a bully. Um, that that's that's a cat, you know. That's a rat. Yeah. <laughs> that's a rat, too. And 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 and, and stand why dangerous too, you know. Uh, what happens? You get to a person that is weak, but it's part of the tribe. Think about it. Think about it. You're in the light, they're in the dark. Think about it. It's mm. not that easy, you know. Like, gotta be very sensible. You know, we're teaching martial arts. We're not we're not gangsters and all of that. We are just teaching martial art. And if you want to test your martial art, go to the UFC, but just make your school proud. Even fight any rules, you still can come on top, mate. You're doing really well. Why not? You know, like, I, like see with Gary, you know, you know, you and I, when we see those clips in the Jerry Cooks in the fight commentary, and it's like, it made Katari's group look so bad. And it's like, we laughed about, but deep down we say, shoot, why, why can't any of this guy win, you know, for once? <laughs> And now, yeah. for once, <laughs> for once, and then you got, and this, and the, the problem is that it's not even white guy criticizing Chinese master. It's a Chinese new generation criticizing them. It's a, this is all bloody useless. You know, this this Chinese martial art traditional stuff is too old, old, old hat, old fan. But they they look good stuff in Chinese martial art. It just hasn't been trained properly for this condition, you know. And so we're trying to explain to them, but. You know, we're struggling a little bit, aren't we? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and if you go, okay, who wants to go and fight in competition, right? Just say you're, you're in your Mulgoon and you say, who wants to go and fight in competition? I'm going to put your hands up. I, I, I do, Super. Okay. What are we going to do to get you to that level for the competition? Yeah. Oh, we're going to do uh, Saping Ma. We're going to big bow up and down the fucking school. We're going to do thumb sing, uh, wooden dummy. I would do 10 forms and weapons and uh, chai sao. You're doing everything but fighting. Fighting, <laughs> yeah. Which is what you want to get. You want to get into real things, you know, to deal with, your, to deal with the issue that you, you, you've got to fight in two months' time. We have to build you up to a level that is, you know, we even got to watch the video of the other fighters. Yeah. What is the advantage of him? We're going to study it. As coaches, we have to study that. Like, 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 like people normal, think that- Like they're... normal people do. Normal fighters will study their opponent. Their, yes. Their, their coaches will give them a game plan, a health yes. plan, 
a, a, a diet, a strength workout, a pack <laughs> workout. It's yeah. professional, but not kung fu. We got to stay strong and, and go up there. <laughs> You know, it's, 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 it's two different fantasy. Like, they, I don't know what they're thinking, but, you know, like, like going into um, seeing, you know, the, the fight team and all that, you know, because one of my students in MMA and, and seeing the, 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 the completeness uh, of teachers and coaches that, that put them together, you know, nutritionists, you know, the person that helped them massage, helping them recover, there's people helping them to train, you know, so they can be there. Yeah, yeah, even therapists for the mind, like they yeah. they got they got so much. It's perfect. You got to go into a professional attitude. It's, it's professional. It's not just one person. I I, I learned from you see people. I'm going to go in there and fight with a win. It's not like that. It, it it's far from that, you know. And and, and people got to understand that that's that's professionalism. They're being very professional, you know. And it's like you know, it's like I used to play in the band. You got roadies, sound guys, lighting guy, engineer guy. You got PR managers. You got people to book the venue for us. You got dancers and stuff like that. I was still playing the guitar in the band. I, was, I didn't even think about all of these people actually put this together and then a show, you know. And then we got to sell tickets and stuff like that, you know. Like this, there's a lot of things go behind to put this person on the front front stage, you know, like. It, it, it's almost mind-boggling, but, but they do. They put it all there, and they and you know the money is there. Like you know, um, you tell me, you know, people go to Grandmaster with the big red packet, and we want to learn this form and all that. It's all about money, isn't it? You think about it the other day. I need I need to make a living out my kung fu. I need just I need to pay the, the school fee, you know. Otherwise, it's no school. I could pay rent. I got you know, dang yang for up in Chinese, you know, the electricity, the water, everything like that. Is they all cost money, so I have to charge you money. So that's that's fair. It's a it's a trade, right? Yeah. But if I want to teach you more extra, it's from my heart because I know you're a good student. I want you to be better than me, representing me. If if I if if, if you are if any generation that's lower lower, then you got no show. The whole thing is it's all BS. You know, you want your student to be better than you because when you get older, you're not going to be faster and stronger than your student. They're going to be the ones going to take over, and you want them in the best condition. So it's just like there's so much money in the UFC. You don't have to do all these other things and stress through our school. You just go to the UFC and win that money. Yeah, <laughs> you like that time for Kung Fu politics, man, uh, makes me sick. You don't, have, so you don't have time for that. Yeah. Like, you know. Like for instance, say, right, I got a stream now that won the UFC. It's a $10 million deal. It's only giving me a couple of million dollars. You think I have time to go on the internet and talk about bullshit and how, how, my, how big my school is and how good I got my training phase? I'm not going to have time for that. I've got two million bucks and I'm going to enjoy my life. <laughs> you know, that's people got to get real about that. So their mind frame, you know, like, you know, those guys in the UFC, they have different mind frame. You know, they don't, they don't, they're not like, you know, worry about few hundred dollars in the red packet. They're not worried about that sort of stuff. It's too yeah. little for them. Peanuts, come on, small business, petty, <laughs> you know? So, so, but we, because we enjoy our art, we want our art to be flourishing. We want, we want changes and, you know, and, and it takes a lot of courage to change things. It takes a lot of courage, you know, because yeah, you say that. I remember yeah. you saying that uh, a certain forum a lot of the Chinese are making fun of Kung Fu in China. Yeah. They're going yeah. more towards BJJ or MMA yeah. and yeah. Sanda because these old arts are not, they're not, not that they're not effective, they're not training it to be effective for combat. Yeah. It's just the yeah. art, we've got to pass it on. It's it's like, oh, shit, I've got, I've got this overhang, I've got to teach Yolkum one to pass it all on or of this respected seafood. Yeah. It's like it's a but, it's a big burden to carry. Especially with a lot of forms. Right. <laughs> you know how, how how much how much time do you got to teach them and how much can you retain? You know? Um you know, you'd be very dedicated to retain a lot of forms. You know, I I, I don't know. I you know, to me it's it, I don't I mean I only know Maybe most about 28 forms now, Manchester, maybe 26. I only practice three or four that I like. I don't even, I forgot most of the stuff. 
I it might come back to me in memory, but the reason why I don't practice it because I, I don't I, I don't find that it's fit me at all. Like I, I'm a different fighters, and then when I was young and older, I'm different again. So you think about all of this stuff, you know, and but there's a lot of burden to carry, a lot of burden to carry the weapons and the, you know the medicine and there's a lot of you know I'm not you know like, even talking to uh but you're talking to Sibu uh Jen Sam, right? You know, it's it, it, it's retaining all of that. And I, I, I respect that. You know, I respect a lot of people that do that. I've got friends that actually they they don't they want nothing change. They want the they right, the way it's been taught. I, I respect that. But but uh, but don't expect me to do it. <laughs> I won't do that. You know, I I I I like to streamline things and I want to do things that, that is practical, is applied properly. Um, and, and, you know, and, and trying to keep that tongue on flavor there, you know, I'm not trying to lose it, you know, and, and I'm making it really entirely different thing. I'm not like that. I'm adding on, I'm making it efficient. Um, so, okay, people might not agree with me. I said, I don't think your hand's efficient. Well, that's, that's good, show me your hand. Maybe I can learn something from you. You're efficient, show me. But if you can't prove me efficient, then maybe you should look deeper and say, look, you know, I could have changed. Because if you don't, it's we, really, you know, like, you know, if, if you shouldn't get hit constantly, there's something wrong. You have to change your hands. You can't just, you know, in uh, can this hum tum my term, you know, crash your head against the wall, you know, and not changing. You know, everything's changed. I, I mean, in my industry, what I do is change a lot. Building industry, uh, in the music industry, it's changed a lot as well. You know, uh, in the information age, it's crazy. You know, like kids can play guitar better than Slash at the moment. You know, they're 13, 14, and they can be sick looking at them, you know, but they're all the time, they want to practice. And, they, and it's like people who call food, cooking food. Some kids are 13, 14 years old in China, they can kick and punch and do a lot of stuff. And, and you know, we're thinking, oh, we've got to put them in a cage and say, a box of that, you've got to do this. You can't go outside this. We can't do that to kids anymore. No. <laughs> you, want, you want your art to advance, you have to modify, you've got to change. It's no question about it. Otherwise, we just left behind. Like the, the kids in China, they just laughed at all of this. They, they laughed at the, 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 you know, none of the traditional master can win in anything. Let alone try to, you know, excel in the art and show them, oh, we can, we can go to all these conditions, we're still winning it. On the street, we're still winning it. In the local, we're still winning it. You know, we can't show any of this. And so it's, it's kind of sad for me too, uh, because, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the age that, in my 60s, I've seen big changes since I was like a kid, 13, 14, how the worlds have changed, you know, you know, technology-wise and all that. And I think my generation has seen the most. Well, even, even, seen... even in Taoism, it's all about change, right? Yeah, it's all about change. And look, I, I think that, you know, like the old days, I, I went back to, um, I went to China, and you know, there's those, those uh, roadside market in China, and, you know, and you see all these weapons they got, you know, you know, they might duck it from the graves, you know, great, right? uh, you know, they stole from the grave and they put it out there and, and you know, you say, oh, should I buy this, you know, go to custom and this is God ball, which is, you know, this is Chinese treasure for the government. I can get locked up by the, you know, communist Chinese, you know, police, you know, and you're thinking, should I get that? So anyway, uh, I looked at a few swords and all of that and it's like they're from the Tang Dynasty or something, or Song Dynasty, you know, mm. and definitely not Qing, you know, and he said, shit, how did the sword look like that? Looks so, like, not so beautiful, like, not, not so stylish, you know? And they thought, oh, this is actually combat. This is how they use in the combat field, you know? They didn't need that to be, like, it has to be heavy, it has to be bold, it has to take the, you know, the weight of the, of the attack or something else, like Grand Do or something like that, you know? They were able to block it off. And it wasn't just flimsy thing that, you know, we see in the shop, you know? So, yeah, so, you know, you, if you go back and study those old pictures and old weapon on the side uh, on the road side, you think, wow, you know, it, it does change. And, like you may go to Daipang Village, you know, I saw the uh, the buff, a butterfly sword, right, or serum dog, and they were pointy, you know, they were they were like uh, uh, I would say sixty, yeah, sixty centimeter long, the blade, right, sharp and bulky like that, and I'm going. How come it's so different to do, you know, the, the modern butterfly swords like that, where you've got the, the handle right 
accept the same level of supply, then you can flip them over. And I thought, they actually don't bloody flip this thing over. They actually, you know, got the rich, the, the richer, the jab, the stab you. That's it. You know, and they were fighting the, the, the Portuguese and you know, the, 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 all, the, all the European that invaded China, 20, 20 nations invaded, invaded Beijing. And, you know, the, you know, the Portuguese and the Dutch and the English and all that, they're all coming in there. And, and you know, Chinese had to fight them off. They got guns and all that. And Chinese used to fight sword. And they all used a short butterfly sword and, the, and the beer, beer, and roll around the floor and try to chop the leg off. Jeez, come on, give me a break, you know? You can see that all the mural on the wall, how you know, they were fighting all these uh, 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 European invaders that are coming on a big ship and coming to land and they're fighting one another. You can see those pictures. And do, you know, what I saw, do you know that the, uh, the American soldiers had a butterfly knife with the, the whole thing when they were doing yeah. uh, back? Geez, uh, I forget what what war it was when the the uh, uh, the English came over. Yeah, yeah. That that war. That you see some of their old Bowie knives, exactly yeah, yeah. With, with the guard and all. Yeah. Just yeah, like yeah, just got, like a just like the Wu did though, you know. Yeah, yeah, they do, and they they got the guard. You know why they got the guard? They're more advanced now. You see, they know they go. You know, they get cut, they stop cut, right? And the finger, they would drop the sword. So they had the guard there. So I, I, when I went to Atlanta, so they showed me a few of this thing there, and that's, it's an advancement of, you know, human ingenuity. Like, it, it must have tried something. Oh, we better protect the head, you know? So it's all come with experience in the combat. It's start changing the weapons, you know? Mm. You know, like, so, so, but when we get to the modern thing, was oh, we're